I went through this video, another video concerning the black Jews. In particular, this book right here is called uh, The Black Jews of Harlem by Howard M. Broats. And this is to be a response to some of the other um, fundamentalists or extreme sects of the black Hebrews because the black Hebrews, there's a wide diversity among black Jews or, or African Israelites or Hebrew Israelites. And it's interesting if one would um, take the time to recognize that these and those that one might see you know, in certain public venues are not the only Hebrews or black Hebrew Israelites. Now, those who did this particular this particular video called the uh, Worship of Haile Selassie, the Rastafarian Doctrine in the UK, it was interesting. And this is not to say that certain Rastas or Rastafarian might be misrepresenting um, mis, uh, the teachings of uh, His Imperial Majesty or misrepresenting what it is to be Rastafarian, no doubt. But they are amongst some Hebrews who are also misrepresenting, or black Hebrews, black Hebrew Israelites who are misrepresenting the black Hebrew teachings and the true black Jews of Harlem. Now, this particular book here is interesting. And this is an old book that we have uh, read. Um, and it's under one of the source books in Negro history. And what we'll find out is that the ideas that have now been called or become Rastafarianism or Rastafari are not unique only to Jamaica, that there were many um, African Americans who we can consider, um, according to the technical definition of the term, as being Rastafari or Rastafarians, but they call themselves black Jews. Now, it's interesting if we would go into this particular book here and we want to point out um, some of the basic uh, things. And there's an interesting article right here. We marked off this particular page on page 17. And it concerns uh, Rabbi, um, Rabbi Matthew. Rabbi Matthew is the only man that got something that benefited our people. Right, and this is very true. Let's just see if there's a picture of uh, Rabbi um, Matthew in here. We we use his picture in some of our videos. Um, you might see him right here. Um, Rabbi Matthews. Um, this is the Commandment Keepers Congregation of um, Black Hebrews or the Black Jews of Harlem. This right here is the congregation attending Hebrew school graduation. As you can see right here, Rabbi Matthew with his graduating class. That picture reminds me of his imperial majesty giving out the diplomas to that generation of Ethiopians. Here is uh, Rabbi Matthew addresses the graduates. Here is uh, a Rabbi um, Mac uh, Kethan, a representative of the Brooklyn group. And just a couple of pictures right here to see some of the original um, black Jews. You understand? The original black Hebrews and the Hebrew Israelites of America from the 1920s and the 1930s and 40s. Um, and once again, here's some more pictures of uh, the ordination of Rabbi James Williams by Rabbi Wentworth Matthew. The ordination right there. And right here, this is Rabbi William um, being given his priestly charge by Rabbi Matthew. And this is all contained in the book, uh, The Black Jews of Harlem. All right. So now let's get to this um, evidence right here that we have to share. Okay. Here it says, uh, let's begin on page... Um, on page uh, 18. It says right here, um, not black but comely, it says, on what basis do the commandment keepers conclude that the so-called Negroes are really the Hebrews of the Bible? 
The members of the sect are devoted readers of the Bible and know many long passages of it by heart. Uh, what from their own point of view is scriptural proof of their identity? We see right here. There are essentially two main points. The first is that Jacob, Yaakov, was black because he had smooth skin, quote, as the black man invariably is, end quote, and hence the patriarchs were black. Solomon was also black, and Matthew contends that the biblical phrase in the Song of Solomon 1 and 5, in which Solomon says, I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, end quote, should be correctly translated as black and comely, not black but comely. Indeed, the Hebrew does permit either alternative, the, the writer of this book, who is a, um, a, a European or Anglo-Jew, it says that the second point is that they are descendants of the union between King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, who founded a line of Ethiopian Hebrew kings from Menelik I down to Hila Selassie the Lion of Judah, who is covertly, it says, who is covertly a Hebrew. Now, this is, this is very, very important. Remember, this book goes back, and this doctrine, this teaching goes back to the, 19, to the 1920s and even before that time, but in particular to the 1930s, the Commandment Keepers Congregation. Now it says, um, here's a quote right here. Um, it says, Of the three sons of Noah, Shem and Ham were black, and only Japheth, the ancestor of the Gentiles, was white. Thus, King Solomon was a black man after the Queen of Sheba became his wife. Not just they had a fling or they had a fear or a booty call or something. No, she became his wife in a marriage ceremony taking six months. She returned to Ethiopia pregnant with the understanding that that the child, if a boy, would be returned to Jerusalem for bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah, or confirmation. At the age of 12, Menelik, the son, did come back and remain in Jerusalem until he was 25. His father, realizing that designs were being made upon the young prince's life, gave him a company of men with whom to go to Ethiopia. The priests who accompanied the young prince deceived Solomon, not his son, but the priest, the, the Hebrew or the Jewish priest, and carried away, Rabbi Matthew says, with them the original tables of the law instead of the copy which the king had prepared. They are to be found this very day at Aksum. Menelik I was the first king of Israel in Ethiopia, from whom Haile Selassie, the Lion of Judah, traces his descent in an unbroken line of 613 kings. Now, it goes on to say that Haile Selassie's connection with the Coptic Church, they say, is due to diplomatic pressure from Britain, which requested in 1896 that after the Italian or uh, Ethiopian Italian War, that all kings coming to the Ethiopian throne be Coptic Christians. However, the court at Addis Ababa is closed for business on Friday. The court in Ethiopia under his imperial majesty, who Matthew over here says is covertly a Hebrew, Haile Selassie, it says that um, the court, the imperial court at Addis Ababa is closed for business on Friday, Friday afternoons, and all day Saturday. No hosier or pork is eaten in his palace right, is eaten in his palace, and he follows the Falasha ritual. Haile Selassie is the present king of the house of Israel, and this is proof that David should never lack a black man to sit upon the throne of Israel. 
when Mussolini overran the country, Haile Selassie stopped at Jerusalem to pray in Hebrew before proceeding to the League of Nations. It is from Addis Ababa that I derive my authority as head of the black Jews. You see that right there? In the United States. We are Africans or Ethiopian Hebrews. We are Africans or Ethiopian Hebrews. Now, as we said, this is from a somewhat rare a somewhat rare book. Let's go to the beginning and give you some of the information right here, The Black Jews of Harlem. And I want you to see when this book was published. It says that this book was first printed in 1964. But the congregation goes back, this particular congregation goes back to the 1920s and 30s where they had a synagogue, a synagogue in Harlem. Such is the name, The Black Jews of Harlem. So it's a very, very important, it's a very important book. And there's other connections to um, Haile Selassie and to Ethiopia. But it's interesting that Rabbi Matthews states right here on the record that it is from Addis Ababa that I derive my authority as head of the black Jews in the United States. We are Africans or Ethiopian Hebrews. So this book is just another book that helps to rebuke and rebut certain um, modern or uh, nowadays uh, black Hebrews who would deny his imperial majesty and deny Ethiopia's uh, Judeo-Christian, Solomonic, and Davidic uh, connection. So more to come on this um, important subject matter, and if you can, try to acquire a copy of this particular book. I think there are a couple of copies out there. The Black Jews of um, the Black Jews of Harlem. Very, very important. Give thanks and praise. Salam Tanat and I is You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free.